Happy New Year, Redeemed Church. I hope you had a wonderful time with family and friends. Thank you so much for joining us online this week. Hey, before we begin, I want to challenge you. There's a few of us that are joining together and reading the entire Bible in 2022. And we're doing it through this amazing app. It's called the Bible in One Year app. It's also on version. If you search Bible in One Year, it's the Nikki Gumbel version. There's a little red icon. And we're going through the Bible together. As we do 2022, we are focusing more on God's Word together. And I'm so excited. So I invite you to join with, you, with us. I will be doing it. And I'd love for each one of us in the body getting into God's Word in a whole new way in 2022. And amazing things will happen. But we wanted to start this new year in a unique way as well in this sermon. And so as we start 2022, I want to challenge you to enter into this year more prayerful than ever before. And what that means, I hope that we'll be doing some listening prayer today during this sermon and Uh, throughout the week so we can hear what the Lord may have for us in 2022. So here's what I want you to do. Below this video or at redeem.church slash 2022, that's the numbers, redeem.church slash 2022, you can download a guide that goes along with this talk. Now the first thing is thanksgiving and praises. There's a section where we're going to spend time thinking through What are we thankful to God and what are we praising Him for that happened in 2021? It always is good to start with us setting our hearts right in thankfulness and and praising the Lord for what He has already done. But then you'll see two more sections and we'll be going through each section in this talk. And I encourage you, if you want to, pause this this, uh, sermon and you can spend time in prayer along with this sermon or do it at the end but make sure that you spend time listening to the lord and so now as we start 2022 this is a time where most of us spend time on new year's resolutions right some of us really get into the process we may do a year in review we may set up some hardcore goals we may uh, start an accountability partner we may track it and crush it and crush our goals if that's you good for you Others, like myself, we may have a long history of coming up with a long list of goals and failing miserably at them and kind of leaving the year feeling worse than when we first came in. I don't know if that's you, but can I get an amen if it is? But I want to say this. There is nothing wrong with the process of New Year's resolutions. I actually encourage it. I think that it's good for us to reflect on our lives. It's good for us to set goals. It's good for us to build plans. It's good to us to have self-improvements. But the truth is that third, like 30% of us quit after, I don't know, like two weeks and then 40% after one month and then 60% after six months and then nobody actually gets to the end. I'm sure some people do. But that's how it goes. So as I was praying about this week and I was praying about this sermon, I got an overwhelming sense that we fall short on what God has intended for us each year. When we simply just do New Year's resolutions or we think about us or self-improvement, we fall short on what the Lord actually has for us each year. See, we as believers can find ourselves sometimes in this strange self-help faith, this strange self-help Christianity and our walk can look not what the Lord intended it to look like. Maybe we find ourselves really just trying to figure out what are the right stuff that we can do and sprinkle a little bit of faith into it, but the Lord wants so much more than that. Maybe it's just us trying to think through how can I find the right mindset. If I just get the right mindset, everything would change. Just believing the right stuff is all that matters, but here's the truth, and we're gonna look at it today. We can find ourselves focusing on external, external things that are really internal issues within us. We can focus on the external when the internal is really what the Lord is after. And He wants to deal with the junk in our lives and our innermost being that is holding us back from the life that God intended us to do. And I'm telling you, there aren't enough steps or a system or courses that you can do to fix the external stuff when there's an internal problem that's happening. And the Lord is calling us to so much more in 2022. 
And we are called to do this. We are called to die to ourselves so that we can find life. He's calling us to a full life, a life in all its fullness, to experience life in 2022 like we never had before. And I'm telling you that self-help is not the way to experience life in all of its fullness. So what do we do? Well, we start by spending time in prayer. And we start by hearing what the Lord has. We don't just need goals. We need the life-changing, all-powerful transformation of the Holy Spirit who is living in us, pulling us to what God has given us as a kingdom assignment, each one of us. And we are set to do that. By the end of the year, we will begin to say, wow, 2022, only God could do those things. Only God could do those because we lived by the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us and it will change everything. It's not just self-help. It's us following and being led by the Holy Spirit. And I, and I think that at the end of the year, we'll start to hear things like this. Wow, I never thought that I'd be free of that. Wow, I never thought that that person who was so far away from God, as God called me to lean in and to love them more, that they are experiencing God and they have come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I think we'll hear this like, I never thought that I would be serving in that way or that I would be doing that because that's what the Lord has intended for you and that's what the Lord has intended for me. That's the story of God throughout the Bible, that he's there and he's just wanting us to hear from him, to get our kingdom assignment, to move the kingdom of God forward through our friends and our family, and our coworkers and our neighbors. And that's what my heart is. You know, I said this a couple weeks ago, but as we were praying for the body and focusing on 2022, I kept hearing that he wants us to focus on connecting our innermost being to God and that he will through that call us as individuals and as a body to new things and we will see transformation happening in our cities. And that's what I want so badly. I hope that's what you desire as well, that God would use each one of us by us just simply listening to what the Lord has for us. And look, the stakes are higher than they've ever been before. And so I'm asking you in 2022 to take time to, to, to take your faith more seriously and listen to the Lord and what he has for us. Because here's the truth, that we have the opportunity in a world that's becoming more planet crazy than we've ever experienced to know the love of God, the God who created everything, the God of the universe, and we get to have this incredible purpose for our lives. Those are the two things, to know God, to love God with our whole heart, and to get an incredible purpose for our lives. So as we begin, I want to look at Galatians 3. Right here, Paul is writing during a time where the Jesus movement is expanding. And it's expanding because it spreads. And so it's no longer just Jewish messianic movement, Jews that are now becoming, uh, having faith in Jesus Christ, but now it's spreading to the Gentiles. And so it has moved to non-Jewish Christians. And so there is this debate that is happening. And many Jewish believers believe that to be a Christian, you had to practice all that was commanded in the law. So some of the Jewish believers came over to, Galatian, to the Galatian church and demands that men get circumcised. A tough ass to adult men. But Paul is arguing that the heart of the gospel is this, that when Paul, when people trust in Jesus, what's true of him becomes true of us. And so Paul is writing that the heart of the gospel is that when we put our faith in Jesus, what is true of him becomes true of us. Paul writes in his book to the Galatians, in his letter to the Galatians, and to help us understand this important fact that we receive righteousness through the death and resurrections, resurrection of Jesus. Nothing else. That is how we are to live. So with that in mind, let's look at Galatians 3, 2 through 3. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish after beginning by means of the Spirit? Are you now trying to finish 
by means of the flesh. Paul is reminding the people, and it's a good reminder for us as we think about New Year's, that it's not about just striving to become better people. When you and me, when we became believers, when we put our faith in Jesus, we received the Holy Spirit, by, and not by works, but by simply believing in what we heard. You know, it's right there in Acts 15. This is when the debate happens. There's this council at Jerusalem, and this debate is going on about if Gentiles must follow the customs of the Jewish faith and be circumcised. And Peter stands up and says this in Acts 15, 7 through 8. After much discussion, Peter got up and addressed them. Brothers, you know that some time ago God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. God, who knows the heart, showed that, the, that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them just as he did to us. It says, when they believed, God gave them the Holy Spirit. God knew their heart and he gave them the living, active spirit. By faith, we are now continually being filled just like them. And that's true of us. So back to Galatians, Paul says, look, at the beginning, we got the Spirit, and the temptation is to finish our righteousness by the means of the flesh. We want to add to it, we, but, but we can't because we started at the highest level achieved. When we believed, we died with Christ, we rose with Christ, and now we have the Spirit of the living God in us, so let's start living like it. Redeemed church, let's start living like it as a body. So what does this mean as we reflect on heading in to the new year? Well, let's fast forward to Galatians 5, and we'll jump around a little bit, but, but we'll start at Galatians 5, 13 through 17. It says this, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but not to use your freedom to indulge the flesh, rather serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. We are called to be free, but we are to use this freedom for one thing, to serve one another humbly in love. Paul is saying, don't throw everything out. We do this. We love our neighbor as ourselves. This is a huge statement. If we receive the Spirit and we walk by the Spirit, this, this is how we are meant to live. Now, this idea of walking by the Spirit. It can become trite. We can say that, walking by the Spirit. But a good definition for this word used here is I conduct my entire life. When it's saying walk, it says I conduct my entire life by the Spirit. Everything about my life, my thoughts, my emotions, my feelings, my decisions, everything must be guided and I must conduct my life by the Spirit. If we walk by the Spirit, we will not gratify the desires of our flesh, but will serve one another humbly in love. Now let's skip down and let's look at Galatians 5.25 because Paul is going to go on and he's going to write this. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. It's simply this. When we put our faith in Christ and receive the Spirit, now we live by the Spirit. So what does it mean to keep in step with the Spirit? If, we're a, if we are going to be living by the Spirit, then we are to be led by the Spirit. And if the Spirit is leading, then obviously our job is to follow what He is leading us to. Now the Greek word here of keeping in step is this idea of keeping in line. Like, like soldiers marching in a line, we are to keep in line with the Spirit. We are to be like that, following Him closely, keeping in step with everything that He does and everything that He says. He wants us to move in every aspect of our life 
in lockstep like soldiers marching in line with him. And he doesn't just want a small group of church people to do that. He doesn't want the spiritual leaders or the elders or the staff or the advisor group. There's not some special spiritual realm where we go off to and we are in step with the Spirit. He's saying the whole church, the whole body, every believer, we're bound together by the same Spirit to get in line and to be led and in step with the Holy Spirit. And that's my heart in 2022, that we would do that. And it all starts with this, worshiping God and praying and listening to what the Spirit has for us as we become a spirit-led church, simply hearing from the Father and doing what we are told to move forward and advance the kingdom of God. And so I have this question. As you're leading and as you're thinking about your New Year's resolutions, will you also build a plan where we listen to God and will you simply ask this question? And it's on the one sheet that we had for you. Spend some time reflecting on this question. What are your gifts, your passions, your burdens, your callings that God wants to use in 2022? Spend some time in prayer, listening to the Holy Spirit, asking this important question. What are some gifts and some passions or burdens or calling that God is calling you to 2022? And when we, when we listen to the Spirit and we're led by the Spirit in that, I'm telling you, Things are going to change. Things are going to change in your own life, but they're going to change for the people around you as he moves, as you advance the kingdom, and each one of us joining together to do that. Now, in addition to following the Spirit this year and connecting with God in our innermost beings, we need to recognize that there there may be some barriers and some strongholds that are holding us back from fully living this free life. But God desires us to be free. And again, our original design is to know and to worship Him, to love Him, and then also join Him in the redemptive plan. But to fully live free, we must begin unpacking those barriers that may be holding us back. And there's no better time to start than right now. And in 2022, we're going to walk together as a church to come to that free living where we are not just living free, but we're loving one another. And and we are humbly serving our neighbors and loving our neighbors as ourselves. Now, I said this earlier, but my biggest challenge with the New Year's resolution, and I'll say it again, is that sometimes we want to change these external things that are really internal problems. We may want to read the Bible more. We may want to not get angry as much. We may be want to be not so anxious. We may want to spend less money, but so many of these things are internal issues that can't simply be dealt with by effort alone. It's good. It's good to think about those things. It's good to set goals. It's good to to recognize them. But if it's just external effort, sometimes we can't break free of those barriers and strongholds that are setting us back. But God desires us to be free. So let's look back at Galatians 5, 19 through 21. It says that that Paul is going to address the fleshy stuff in our lives. These are sins that we can commit. These are habits that maybe we run to because of past hurts that are just plain sin. You know, maybe they're small, willful sins that we commit that eventually become strongholds. Or or maybe they're habitual sins that we can begin to justify in our minds. But let's read Galatians 5, 19 through 21. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, this list is not exhaustive. You can add things from your own personal lives or sins that you're dealing with, things that you are dealing with. But remember in this chapter that God desires freedom for us and calls us to be free. Now, there are many things that you that you might have been living with for years. There might be things that you've been living with for decades. There might be sins that you never thought that you'd be free of. But maybe, just maybe, in 2022, 
the Lord wants to finally bring breakthrough in these areas. And let's start today. So what do we do with these things? Well, pull off that sheet again, and there's a section for barriers and strongholds, and this is where we're going to get vulnerable. Spend some time praying and see what God wants to reveal to you. Because we first must acknowledge and name the things that God wants to break us free of. You'll see on the document that we'll be doing this today, that we'll be focusing on what God wants for us in prayer. But then we simply do this. Once we get that list, we repent of our sins. We confess the sin to God that as He convicts you through the Holy Spirit. And we simply declare that our heart is to turn completely away from this sin. We first name that sin that the, God, that the Lord has convicted through the Holy Spirit, and then we repent and we ask for forgiveness and we turn ourselves away from that sin. We declare that our heart is to completely turn away from that sin. And then we simply receive God's forgiveness. We declare boldly in our heart that we receive God's forgiveness and it's washing over us. And with joy and gratitude, we now receive the full forgiveness that God promised through His Word for you and me. And then we rebuke the enemy's hold on us because of that sin. We take our rightful position and our rightful place through the authority of Christ Jesus, and we now stand free. The enemy no longer has a place to stand. And then here's the cool thing. We now replace it with God's truth and His fruits. Let's look at Galatians 5, 22 through 25. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. We get to turn our minds and our hearts to God's truth and replace things like anger with the fruit of the Spirit of gentleness. We get to replace watching too much TV with self-control. We get to replace anxiety with joy and peace. We get to replace hate and unforgiveness to someone with kindness and goodness. And we now walk in the freedom that comes through Christ and through the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And I tell you that when we start to do these two things, when we start living into our freedom by loving others and loving our neighbors this year, by being in step with the Holy Spirit and then removing the internal barriers, barriers that are holding us back, this whole area of Lakewood and UP and Stillicum and DuPont and Spanaway and Parkway, Parkland are going to experience Jesus like never before. When free people move forward and they love their neighbors as themselves and live into that freedom and are a step and in marching step with the Spirit, things begin to change. And that's my heart for 2022. As we focus on being transformed and hearing God's voice in our innermost being, not just our only our New Year's resolution on improving ourselves, but also hearing what the Lord has in kingdom assignments for you and I, we will finish 2022 with this. Wow, look at what the Lord did. Wow, only God could do these things. And when we live into being spirit-led, things begin to change, not just for us, but for all those that are around us. So let me pray for you as we head into 2022. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you sent your son to die on the cross, that he was buried and rose, and now we step into freedom through the Holy Spirit because of that. That you saved us from our sin, and now we, we, we continue this kingdom mission that you have put us on as Redeemed Church, as individuals, and as a, as a body, that you, Lord, would be leading us through your spirit, that we would each hear from you on what you have for us. And Lord, we pray 
that our friends and our family and our coworkers and our neighbors would come to the knowing and loving you, Jesus, as their Savior. And Lord, so we pray right now that you would help us just to be led by your Spirit, but also that you would begin to take these barriers and these strongholds that are holding us back and you would set us free from them. Lord, we love you with all that we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we love you all. Again, join us for the Bible in one year in 2022. There's information at redeem.church, and we will see you next week.